All right, so a few weeks ago, I had a conversation with this older gentleman who was probably in his late 60s. This guy talked about how his wife had just left him. She was already on to seeing somebody else. And he's explaining to me in this conversation that like he's just broken. He told me he had struggled with a porn addiction since he was eight. He was just financially bankrupt due to a divorce and lawyer fees. Basically, long story short, the conversation just ended with him deciding that he was going to get involved in a men's recovery group and just focus on himself. And I remember just getting off this phone call with this like heavy feeling in my chest. And I think a big part of me like could relate to his story. Um, just having been an avid porn user for many years, but um, What shook me the most was that like this guy was near the end of his life And he felt like it had been wasted when you're in your 20s and when you're in your 30s, dude You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna have a couple fuck-ups. You're gonna get into bad habits right and you use that disgust with yourself as a drive for change. Now, what happens though if you never make a change? If you stay the same? What happens if the pain of, you know, the consequences of your choices never outweigh the desire to transform and to change? And so as I was talking to this man, it's like I realized this is the reality that's waiting for me. That's waiting for you. If we continue down this path of being a slave to our lusts and being a slave to these stupid distractions that occupy our minds that we can't seem to break. So I was in Vegas this last uh, like two weeks ago. And if you guys have ever been to the Strip, you know that there's a lot of casinos, people out partying, having a good time. And um, if you guys know me, I like to be degenerate every now and then. Aside the point, as you're walking past these like casinos, these slot machines, if you look at the bottom, you'll see these numbers, right? And they're like $1.50, 35 cents, 73 cents, $2. And what these numbers mean are the cash out from that machine. So it doesn't matter how much people put into the machine, this is how much people are leaving with. A couple dollars, maybe, usually a couple cents. And it's like this on 99% of the machines. In nearly every single gambling statistic, this has been done millions of times, we all know this, that the longer you gamble, the less likely that you're gonna walk away with any money. But when you're in that seat and you see the numbers flashing, the jackpot's listed at $100,000, it only costs a dollar to play. Your reasoning goes out the window. And the idea, the anticipation that, that maybe, just maybe today is my lucky day, sweet, sweet dopamine begins to flood the mind and you pull that lever. Why is this relevant, you might say? Well, because you cannot expect dramatic change in your life with minimal effort. No amount of money or luck can fix an impoverished mind that is a slave to his lust. So let me just say this. I believe that the greatest threat to our generation is not on this macro level. It's not AI. It's not climate change. It's not what this political candidate is doing over here. It's like, dude, it's existential. It's you versus you. It's right in front of your nose. Like that is... The problem of the century. There is an all-out assault on your time, on your energy, on your money, on your sexuality, dude. If you are not the sovereign master over your own soul, you can bet you're gonna sell out to the highest bidder. So how do you know if you're selling out your soul? Well, what occupies your mind, right? What is valuable to you? Don't say money is valuable to you when you wait for the weekend and you go blow $500 on shit you don't need to impress people you don't care about. Don't say your time is valuable to you when you're up till 1 a.m doom scrolling tiktoks when you got to be at work at 8 a.m don't say that your health is important to you when your entire diet is just nicotine and hot cheetos bro like take some responsibility for your choices do you understand that the battle is you versus yourself how are you going to be worried about taylor swift on private jets kendrick lamar and drake p diddy whatever you know when it's like uh you don't know how to prioritize yourself and your habits Ooh, a new AI app, new iPhone, big tits on this girl over here. Like, who cares, dude? And the way to stop caring, the way to stop giving in to these addictions isn't just by deciding I'm not going to do this anymore. No, it's the opposite. It's deciding what is important to you. Not caring about the mundane and the frivolous and all these f***ing distractions that everybody's getting involved with become a byproduct of you making this return to your masculine essence, your feminine essence, right? your innate longings for meaning and connection, a life that's lived in accordance with your innermost truths. It's like, dude, this is the way. You have to see past the noise. You have to see past the immediate gratification. Or else what happens? 
Well, you end up like this 68, 69 year old man I just mentioned. One of the things that continues to just amuse the heck out of me is the older I get, the more I realize like God has just given us dangerous amounts of free will. It's like sometimes if I'm being honest, I wish there weren't so many decisions to make. It's like I wish there was just a path I could take and it would be simple and it would just be right there in front of me. But it's like that's not, that's not the world that we live in, right? The world that we live in is marked by errors and mistakes and just failing again and again and again and only getting better by this much every time, but that is still successful. I'm not trying to get all philosophical on you guys. Like I'm gonna be 31 in a few months. My 20s are behind me, I'm old as shit, and I'm never gonna get those years back, right? And I would be lying to you if I said I spent most of that decade chasing fulfillment, you know, being a rock star and, and all these things. It's like, you have to decide, do you want a light that is easy? that feels good? Or do you want a life that is fulfilling? And are you willing to choose the fulfilling life if it's hard, if it's lonely, if you fail again and again and again? Do you want that? I bet if you were to ask a hundred of your friends what they want out of life, they would all say things like, you know, I wanna be healthy, I wanna be rich, I wanna have a hot wife, a hot husband, this car, right? Everyone wants those things. Your goals are not what make you unique. The pain that you're willing to endure in order to see to it that you achieve that goal is what makes you unique. You know, are you willing to suck? Are you willing to look cringe on the internet? It's like put years of effort into something that you might not see any results with. It's like, those are the questions that you should be asking yourself. Because if your answer is no, there's a really good chance that you're just in love with the result of that process rather than the process itself, right? This, this part that it takes to get there. And to be honest with you, that's 100% okay. When I was in college, I went to school for air traffic control. That's what I thought I wanted to do. Uh, aviation ran in my family. I was going to school at the time at this very nice, like, collegiate, I don't even know the word, dude, but like, it was a good school for air traffic control or whatever. So I'm in year two and things are starting to get a lot more difficult. They're putting a lot of pressure on us. I was struggling, like I was stressed out. One of my professors got fired for like verbally abusing the students. Um, they wanted people to quit, like that was the mindset. Like how can we get these students to quit because the stress that they're gonna endure on this job is gonna be nothing like what they're going through. And, um, and I remember one night I was like just not able to sleep and I asked myself the question, it's like, am I, willing, am I willing to do this for the rest of my life? Could I handle the stress of this job in the real world even though the money's good, like is this gonna be worth it? Well, here I am today and obviously I didn't go that route, but don't be afraid to course correct when you're trying to create fulfillment in your life and try something new. No one is keeping you in a situation except for you. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says, above all things, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. So use that energy to explore. Be curious uh, for a season. Try new things, right? But don't let any one of those things rule over you. Subscribe to this channel if you guys want to see more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one.